I can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you Great. fine. Are you are you ready to go? I think so. Okay, then I think there's nothing stopping us then. Go ahead. Okay, uh, welcome to my talk. And well, let's see how stati statistics also look in, in this field. Um, I want to talk a little bit about SPDX license markers and reuse statements. And before I show you statistics, I will recall what they are. Um, let's start with uh, what is a license. Um, Whenever you contribute anything to KDE, you do some creative work, you um, own the right that this is only yours. Um, that is good and fine, but in open source software, we say it's good that other people have the right to use it, to study it, to share it, to improve it. And um, by default, they are not allowed to do that. And to allow those people, those other people to do something like that, uh, we have to grant them licenses and they are different free open source uh, licenses most prominently in kde is it's gpl lgpl mit or bsd and some more um, and you have to grant them in a legal correct way such to to ensure that others are able to to use what we are doing um, when you are doing that you usually have something like that this is some arbitrary license header I took from our code base. Um, it's typically a comment at the head of file. At the top, you see a list of um, the copyright holders, so the people who own the creative right to, to that contribution. And then we have a lengthy text. This one is about three paragraphs and simply explains this code is under the GPL 2.0 or any later version. Um, and the problem with these long texts is if you create another source code file and copy the license header because well, it's already there, and then you decide, well, it's maybe not the GPL, but the LGPL, and you start to modify a little bit and replace the general by, by a lesser, and then maybe forget also replacing that one, then we already have a problem to see, well, what is meant? Is it GPL or LGPL? And such problems occur often, really, really often. And it's um, hard to figure out by automatic tooling, what do we have for licenses? And that's the reason why uh, we discussed one and a half years ago to go with reuse compatible license statements. This is mostly the same at the top, we simply replace copyright by this um, SPDX file copyright text. And the important part is that we replace the long license header text by a machine readable identifier. And that's easier to read, it's, easy, it's harder to make errors, and it allows to make automatic tests and also create statistics of what we have here. And during that time, a lot of things happened and many, many people helped. Um, before I show that, um, if you want to read more and know more, know more about um, how this framework is working, this SPDX framework, there's a really good website, the reuse.software website, even with a small three minute video that explains everything to you. There's all the legal documentation, if you want to go into that. And of course, we have our wiki page with how-tos and guidelines, how we are doing that in KDE. In a nutshell, it's quite simple. If you create a new, new file, you have to add a license identifier tag, you have to add a copyright tag, and for the license that you are using, you have to add the license at, into a specific subfolder. It's all documented here, and it's actually really hard to do it wrong, and there are even tools that check for you that you are doing it right. And during the last one and a half years, we started to replacing the old existing license headers by well, these shorter expressions. And that's not always that simple. Um, we have automatic tooling for that. It's also documented at the wiki page if you want to convert it, because um, we have to match exactly what license we have. We must not change the license by doing that because we only want to make it machine readable, 
but we must not change it. Um, and I will look in some areas where a lot of progress happened. Um, this is frameworks, for example, and there we are actually done. Um, here you see the number of files we have that are about um, yeah, close to 9,000 files we have at the moment. And there's a small gap between the files that um, are converted to SPDX and those are not, and those are the files that are duplicated. These are um, modules that uh, will be done with um, KF6, and so we didn't spend time for it. So at that point, with about KF573, we were done with uh, the whole progress. And you see nicely that for all new files, there's a small upward trend. So people are still, well, uh, are using it for new files, which is really good and important. Another area where uh, we currently can see a lot of progress is Plasma. And that's extremely nice because I didn't do anything and people started doing the conversions there and occasionally added me to, to pull requests. Um, so you see, I did the statistics about two weeks ago before the release, but um, it's, well, it's on a really good track. And with the I just did a, um, did a review on a, pull requests, so we are probably right here at the moment in one or two, one or two days. And if we look at the overall list, um, it looks actually not that bad. Um, let's start at the top. Um, I did a small calculation of all the source code files. I could check out with KDE source build and simply looked at the CPP and header files, which is not, not completely accurate, but gives a really good impression and it's easy to calculate. And we have about, well, closely to 7,000 files and close to 40,000 files we have converted, which is really cool. Um, and you see frameworks that are done or mostly done. Well, PIM, I completely forgot, they are simply done. They did an impressive job and it's all converted. Frameworks are done essentially. Plasma will be done soon. We have a few smaller modules that probably will, well, not that hard to convert. And there, I think that's the area where we have um, some work to do, but it's looking really good. And it's so nice to see a lot of different people doing the work. And if we do something like um, adding such markers to, to the files, we can do a lot of tooling. And that's something I just tried out yesterday. Um, I uh, did a check out of all the source code I could, could get. And um, well, I grabbed for our license markers and did some statistics, which license statements do we have in our uh, code base? So we can see, and I must go to closer because it's really small for me. Um, we have uh, the majority with um, GPL2 or later. Then we have the really big area with um, LGPL2 or later. And this is the combination of two or three or um, um, accepted by the KDEV and so on. You see, uh, it's a good trend. I think that's, the, that's expected to be the majority. What we probably should look into in the future is, um, well, we have a lot of different statements. I made it cut at all uh, statements that were used at most 10 times, and there are a lot of different interesting licenses we have at few occasions, but we can audit later. No, we have an overview of uh, what we have here. And, and that's actually it. Um, if you are interested, it, um, go to the, to the website, go to, to the wiki. It's easy to, to do conversions. Um, just ping me on IRC or, or metrics. And many, many thanks to other people who are involved and in making this work. Okay, thanks a lot. I think time is mostly done. Just ping me on metrics. Yeah, thank you very much, Andreas, for that. As you said, questions uh, for the lighting tags, we refer to the matrix chat. So catch Andreas there, and I'm sure he'll be uh, happy to answer some of those. Thanks.